Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with my monthly designer challenge video. This month's theme is Charmed, and so all of us will be using any of the Charmed dies from our collection, and you can check them all out at KarenBerniston.com. For today's card, I'll be using the Coffee Charms. The inspiration for this card is one that I made last month using the Knight and Dragon die set and the exact same techniques that I'll show in the video today. So you can definitely make these cards using a variety of different dies. Just pick your favorite. First thing I'll do is cut my card, which I've decided on a four and a quarter inch square card. So that means I need to start with a piece of cardstock, eight and a half by four and a quarter, scored in the middle for folding. Now the technique of the card is going to be using die cuts to give a stamped look, but I am going to do my greeting using an actual stamp. And I've chosen this stamp here by Funny Bones, Riley and Company, it says anything's possible with enough coffee. And I'll use my Misty to stamp that perfectly onto the inside panel of my card. And I placed my greeting just a little higher than center since I am planning on adding my pop-up to the lower portion of the card. I just grabbed a piece of printer paper for this next step and cut a four and a quarter inch square that I could use to cover the inside left panel of my card using adhesive only along one side. So to cut my coffee cup shaped window, I'll have to use two dies. I can't cut them at the same time, but I can temporarily kind of tape them together just to get a good placement on the dies for the window. And once I like where that eventual coffee cup will be, I'll cut these one at a time. So I'll start with the lower part of the coffee cup. You can use any die cutting machine that can accommodate a wafer thin die. Today I'm using a Sizzix Big Shot. I've rolled it through twice just because I have two layers. The tape I'm using is Scotch removable temporary tape. Now I will cut the lid part of the opening and I do want to make sure that I have that die placed where there's some overlap between the two pieces. So you can see I've moved it down to where the cut line is into the cup itself. And once again, I'll roll that through twice. Usually that scotch removable tape doesn't leave any residue, but I was on printer paper for this and I think that's why. I could definitely feel a little residual sticky after I pulled the tape off, so I used a white artist's eraser to remove it. Now I'm ready to add that scrap of transparency between the two layers, and I'm just using a tape runner around the perimeter of my transparency scrap. And then just to make sure that I don't create any catch points, I do want to seal down the actual edges of the opening. So a little bit of glue around the opening, then tape runner everywhere else. And naturally I got glue everywhere, so I just took a quick little bit of housekeeping on that. But there I've finished it. Now I've got my transparency trapped between the layers. I've sealed down the edges so that they won't become catch points. I've surprisingly survived without too much glue all over my card and I'm ready to make my pretty coffee cup. I found a scrap of burlap that I thought would be perfect for the sleeve die, so I ran it through a couple times just to make sure that I could die cut through that burlap. Okay, to assemble the lid and the coffee cup, I need to use my window opening to make sure that I put the right amount of overlap on them so that they will perfectly line up with the window. So I place my lid face down in the window and then add a little glue to the bottom edge. Then I place my cup face down in the window lining up at the bottom. That way I know for sure that I'm creating a coffee cup of the exact right height to fit in that window opening. And then from there I will just add that burlap sleeve that I die cut. And then rather than use the heart that came in the set because I plan to use that at the top of the coffee cup, I rooted around in my embellishment drawer and I found these little wooden stars. So I'm going to glue one of those into the center. Before I construct the pop-up inside the card, I'd like to work on the front of the card. And this is that technique that I wanted to show about how you can just use white cardstock and a black pen to give the look of a stamped image using the die cuts. Things will go a little faster if you use a score tape on the back of that white cardstock so that every piece becomes a sticker. One thing I like to do with my big roll of score tape is keep little scraps. So any time I've used a piece of score tape that I didn't need the whole way across, I trim off the excess and then I just put those little scraps on the outside of my roll. 
And that way, sometimes you just need a little itty bit of score tape, you know, to make something a sticker. So then I always grab those little pieces off of the outside of my roll. And then when I need something big, I just move them so that I don't accidentally cut through them. Then I pick them up off of whatever piece I'm using, put them back on the roll. And now I can just start die cutting. And after every cut of the little sleeve, I will use a fine tip black pen to go in and trace in the lines on the sleeve before I take that piece out of the die. And there is also a stencil feature on the lid die, so I can do the same thing using the die as a stencil to add that black detail line to the lid before I take it out of the die. Everything's a sticker, so assembly is a breeze. I just peel up the liner on the sleeve and put that in the center of the cup, peel up the liner on the lid and put that at the top of the cup. I'm not planning on using these as charms, so I can cut away the hole at the top. And then the last step would just be to trace along the edge of the pieces that I just put on. And then I just turned off the camera and turned on a podcast and cut and assemble until I had 12 of them. And then my final bit of assembly was to add the heart to each cup. I kind of staggered the locations of these. Again, just cut it out of the same sticky white cardstock so that I could just easily put them on as stickers and trace around them. Now remember my window opening had the little charm hole at the top and I decided to disguise that by putting one of those little hearts, this time cut out of a red cardstock, on both the front and the inside of the card. Okay, now I can start placing those coffee cup stickers all over the front of my card and then just tracing around them with that same black pen. And that's very easy to do. The pen will just hug right along the edge of the piece. And there may be times that your pen slips a little bit like mine just did, and it just adds to the charm of the card. I would not stress over a few little errant pen marks here and there. You can use partial cups, so if you end up with a coffee cup that you'd like to hang off of the edges, then just cut off the excess, but then keep those little pieces and parts of the coffee cups, because if they're big enough, you can use them along an edge and still be able to fill in some spots without having to make an entire new coffee cup. I was able to fill in the entire front of the card and still end up with two full coffee cups and a couple partials left over. For the pop-up portion, I will use one of the platforms from the Upsy Daisy pop-up. This is such a great generic die set. As you look at the die face up, you're looking for the one where the triangle points to the left. And again, I'll just turn to a lightweight white cardstock for this. Now after die cutting, if you want to, you can add an M through the triangle opening and a V at the bottom where the tapered tab is. And then when you pop that out of the die, you've already got your M and your V on the platform itself. M means mountain fold. So these two folds along the triangle section should both be mountain folds. You fold away from yourself. V means valley. That means the four folds along the long section of the platform should all be valley folds. You're folding toward yourself. That combination of valley folds will bring the tapered tab around to the other side. I recommend a strong glue or tape. I'm using Lineco Neutral pH Adhesive in my fine tip bottle. We do sell both of those items on our website. And once that tapered tab is glued to the other side, you've basically created this little rectangular box on one side of the platform. The other side still has that M. Again, you'll want a strong glue or tape to cover the M triangle with adhesive. And then where that will go inside the card, is lined up against the fold with the tip of the triangle along the bottom edge of the card. Now that M triangle is glued there inside the card. Butt it up against the fold on the left side of the fold and then the tip of the triangle right at the base of the card. Now let's find the closed position to the box. It's not this first diagonal fold, it's the second one, the one that's closest to the box, that will allow you to fold the box over and collapse it down flat so that a section of the box up on the left side actually overlaps the window. That's what you want to see because that section of the box is what's going to hold that pretty coffee cup in the perfect position to line up with that window. So to do that I will add some adhesive to that little skinny part of the box right there. Then I place my pretty 
coffee cup face down in the opening. Definitely want to do this against the table. And then I can collapse my platform down into that closed position again so that that section, that glue section of the box actually hits the back of the coffee cup. And in keeping with the theme of Karen is sloppy with her glue today, I didn't think about the leftover glue hitting my card because that entire box doesn't fit the back of the coffee cup. Silly me, I'll need to use my eraser again. Actually, I've got a glue stain. I'll probably just put something over the top of it. Okay, moving on. Let me put it back in the closed position again because now I want to attach the box, the other side of the box, the other small panel to the other side of the card. So I've added my glue to that little box area right there. And then I want to leave everything in its nice closed flat position and then close the right side of the card against that exposed adhesive. And then since I'm using glue, I usually open carefully so that the box doesn't pop right back up again. I will often just put my thumb or finger into the box and give it a good press as I open it just to make sure that, that glue sets up. So let's just check it, make sure that that pretty cup ends up perfectly in the opening, it does, and then the Upsy Daisy platform will make it rise up as the card is opened. So I have leftover platform and I think it would be fun to do something with it. So I will use the fishtail banner that comes with the Upsy Daisy platform along with the word hello from word set one. Obviously had I known I wanted to add this hello banner, I would have done it before adding my coffee cup. And I suppose the easiest might be just to take the coffee cup off, put the hello banner on and then replace it but I've got such good placement on that coffee cup, I'm gonna show another trick, which is just to cut away a portion of the coffee cup using the die from the banner. And that way I know that I'll be able to place it on the leftover portion of that platform and have that little cutout area just hug the edge of the coffee cup so that it just appears like it's behind the coffee cup, but really I just cut away that corner. So by doing that, you get no hint of the hello banner in the closed position, but then when you open it, it will pop up with the coffee cup. This little small mug charm and the heart are going to be the perfect solution to my errant glue. I will just make sure that I place that mug right over the top of my glue stain and then trace around it with the same method. Problem solved. And then I just finished out the inside of the card using my leftover coffee mugs. I did use the other coffee mug charm, the other small one, and another red heart. And then one last step to make sure the back of the card feels like it's the same heftiness and weight of the front is just to add another panel of cardstock to the back, which I stamped with Made in Texas and signed. And that created the perfect balance to the card. Since I chose a four and a quarter inch square that will fit in an A2 envelope, it will mail for a single stamp. So obviously any of our layered little dies, charms, characters, and things will work great with this technique. Anything that you can layer up with a couple layers of white cardstock to allow you to trace around it to really give you that line drawing kind of stamped look to your dies. Just a great way to get a little bit more mileage from your dies. Obviously that upsy daisy pop-up is a great generic die for all sorts of cards. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenberniston.com where you can find out information about purchasing these dies as well as links to all my other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.